There's got to be more Than going back and forth From doing right to doing wrong Cause we were taught that's who we are Come on, get on the line right behind me You belong with everybody Thinking there is worth in what you do And like a hero who takes the stage with a couple of weeks uh, and then go inside permanently uh, but next week I think it's supposed to be a little bit cooler than it is today so that's a, that's a win for us but we certainly understand if you want to just get up and make your way in it's good to see all of you would you uh, 
Uh, Tony, if you... He just went inside. Going inside. Tony's going inside. Well, I was going to suggest that you might want to change your sermon topic. Are you going to get a sermon about hell? This would be a good day to preach it, buddy. It'd preach. It would preach. Hey, you know what? Uh, as Tony's walking away, he's celebrating his uh, entry, his third year here at Grace Works. Woo! Appreciate Tony and Michael and the staff. So, yeah. Hey, uh, would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Father, we just thank you so much. And uh, whether the weather is raining or cold or hot, God, and maybe that's the lesson in these outside services. No matter what surrounds us, your love floods over us. Your love is eternal unconditional Lord thank you for loving us and because we have that love we can get through the difficult times such as what our nation our world is facing now and Lord I especially pray for those who are facing the the tension the unrest in our nation for those who are facing the threat of the virus and then, Lord, for those who have all the other issues to deal with on top of those. But right now, God, we just want to talk about you and our relationship with you and how we can draw closer to you. So lead us today, Lord, as we worship you and as we love one another. In Christ's name, amen. Hey, I want to say a couple of things about uh, before Michael comes back up. When we go to the Father's Day service, we have the sanctuary. It's already set up. You can go in and look at it if you want to. Uh, we've uh, removed every other row of seats. Uh, we will sanitize between the two services. We do need your help in sort of indicating which service you would likely attend, the 9 o'clock or the 10.30. I'll be walking around uh, for just a few minutes. If you want to get a card, just raise your hand. I was trying to give those out before, but we really want you to register. You can also do that online. We've tried to take care of everything, so we'll be inside. You'll be safe. We do ask that you sanitize your hands when you go in, and let's limit our, uh, our physical contact with each other not about you, but it's about protecting the other people who may be more vulnerable than you are. So let's do this in the way that Grace Works can, and uh, let's thank God for the victory that he's given us during this difficult time. Michael? Well, it's good to see all of you here this morning again. And hey, let me just say, and Bill and I have acknowledged this, can you think can you think of six consecutive Sundays in a row that you could have had a service outside? We, I think we're on our sixth consecutive Sunday morning outside. And if you think that's a coincidence, I disagree with you. I think that God is honoring that we're coming together and that I can't think, I don't think I could string six together, six Sundays together since I've been at this church that we could have come out six times. So praise the Lord for that this morning. We give the Lord a clap offering for that because we're here to praise him this morning. Yeah, honk the horns. I'm going to miss that the most when we go back inside, I think. So, uh, hey, you know, we haven't been able to do any small group stuff and we don't know when that day's coming and we haven't been able to have choir or anything but you know what I thought I would do if some of the choir members if you are willing would you do me a favor would you come right up here and just stand wrong if you're a choir member I want to sing a choir song the hallelujah chorus no I'm kidding we're not going to do that if you're a choir member come on Audrey lead the way I see you want come on up here we're going to sing songs that you're familiar with hey David come on man Liz I'll just, we'll stand and we'll look towards him and we'll sing. Yeah, give him a hand. Cheer him up there. Honk, honk at him over there. Yeah. We're just going to stand across and we're going to sing Amazing Grace and another familiar song. And this will be our choir number now. Y'all can sing with us, okay? Yeah. Here they come. Let's sing this choir. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Let's 
me on a Saturday afternoon to get this stage set up, and it's funny, ironic, we were just talking about songs, and he said, man, you know, he was talking about songs, if you've ever talked to Raymond, he gets a little fired up, and uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, and he said, started talking about the song Holy Spirit, that randomly, and I had just asked Whitney if she would sing the song Holy Spirit, she, if you remember, she sung that over here when we had a, a prayer service outside a little while back, so, uh, but uh, some of you are going to know this song, we want you to sing along with us, it's a worship song. So please sing along with us if you know it. But I gotta go get it started here, so here you go.
I'll go ahead and apologize in advance for y'all sitting around Raymond. I saw him sitting, singing back there. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Whitney. And, uh, you know, by the way, Chip Weiner couldn't be here today, and I told him I was going to give him a hard time online. So, Chip, you better be watching. Uh, we sang some of your songs here this morning. I know you wish you could have been here for him. It's a beautiful day. We have a great crowd. Uh, we miss you guys. They're out visiting family today. So, uh, But uh, we come to this point in the service every Sunday morning, and it's just a time that we take and we focus and talk to the Lord and thank Him for something. And to me, it's nothing short of a miracle that I have been out here, I think, six consecutive Sundays, and the Lord has provided phenomenal weather. It might be a little warm today, you know? I'm not complaining. Praise the Lord for the wonderful weather that he's given to us. We have something that we can thank the Lord for. I know there's something that you can think to thank the Lord for. And uh, so right now, if you're watching live, if you're listening over here on your radio station, if you're watching Facebook Live, take a moment just to talk to the Lord. We're going to sing another song here. Right now we're in a sermon series talking about needing the Lord. And this song is Jesus talking. And he's saying, remain in me. We need him. Because apart from me, Jesus talking, you can do nothing. So remain in me. So right now, bow your heads, close your eyes, if you would. This is not for me. This is not for Michael Pretty Man. This is for our God and our Savior. So if you have a problem with me, go ahead and put that aside because this is not for me. I'm just asking to do this and talk to the Lord right now and lift him up and thank him for something this morning. everything we say and do. I pray that your name would be honored. God, that you would be glorified. That you would be lifted up. God, right now I pray that you speak through Tony. Speak through him this morning. And uh, just bless him this morning. And God, open our ears and our hearts. And I speak on behalf of everyone here right now when I tell you that we love you. We thank you for the gift of salvation we have through Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Anyone hot out there? Okay, okay. Pat, would you stand up, please? I want everybody to notice Pat's contraption she has around her neck. Those are little fans that are blowing on her. That's the reason she is so cheerful right now. Vince did that. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. I have to admit, I was taking off when Brother Bill was doing the announcements and welcome, and I had to get my hanky. Now, I, years ago when I was a kid, I used to make fun of my pastor because he always had a hanky with him, and he'd do this number, and he'd do this number. I have become my pastor. Uh, I was told I could go as long as I wanted to. Uh, Ron and Linda Cloud, thank you for permission. Uh, they're back. They're the couple that's back there rocking with the shock absorber rockers. They said, go as long as you want. So... Uh, I will not go as long as I want or as long as my wife wants me to go. So we're going to, I want to 
kind of share just a brief message with you. June 7th, 2020. Wow, we're not even halfway through the year. And what a year it's been. It's been a year which we're experiencing a pandemic uh, virus. We as a community have been through a tornado. We as a nation have been through a lot of violence, killing, looting. And the thought that comes to my mind and in my household is, I've had enough. How many of you have had enough? How much more can we experience this year? I saw a Facebook post and I think this uh, kind of sums it up. It says, this weekend, I'm going to sling some candy out the door, put a turkey in the oven, unwrap some gifts, and call it a year. How many of you'd like to call it a year? We've been through so much. I've had enough. I've experienced enough. I've had my fill. There's so much uncertainty, fear, pain, questions. All of this creating a cloud of depression, despair. I want us to take just a brief moment to look at God's word. Because here we find someone who was in a similar situation. He says, I have had enough. The prophet Elijah in the Old Testament, 1 uh, Kings chapter 19. We find him say, making this statement, I have had enough. And I appreciate scripture so much because we have these characters and the personalities in the Bible that we place them on a pedestal. And we think there's no way we can accomplish all that they've done. But yet, Scripture shows us how human they are, how frail, how weak they are. There's characters in the Bible such as Moses who, when he was wandering in the wilderness, he said, God, take my life. There was Jonah. He preached for a revival to take place in Nineveh. It happens. And what does he do? He goes off on the side and says, God, take my life. And even the Apostle Paul, in his words to the church at Corinth, he says the experience he had in Asia, he said we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. He'd reached rock bottom. He'd said, I have had enough. So we can identify with them as we look at Scripture and as we see these who have experienced what we've experiencing right now. Now, I'm looking at 1 Kings chapter 19, and I'm going to trust that you're going to read 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 18, and 1 Kings 19. But I want to share a passage from 1 Kings 19. It says, When King Ahab got home, he told Queen Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah, the prophet, he was afraid and he fled for his life. And he went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. And then he went on alone in the wilderness traveling all day. And he sat down under a solitary broom tree and he prayed that he might die. And he says, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. And he looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more. The journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he came to a cave where he spent the night. But when the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now that I am, now they are trying to kill me too. 
go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty wind hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast, the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. And, the wind, and after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you. They've torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And then the Lord said to Elijah, Go back the same way you came. Travel to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Japhat, from the town of Abel, Melala. To replace you as my prophet. Now, let's look at this real briefly. What Elijah experienced. First, let me say, Elijah was a prophet, a preacher, a political reformer, a miracle worker. Elijah had experienced so much. And the reason I said, go back and read chapter 17. For in chapter 17, you see where what he experienced. He During a famine, he was fed by ravens. And the brook that he stayed near did not go dry during the famine. And then once he followed God to that place, God led him to another city. He led him to a widow. And the widow had just enough food for her and her son, and they were going to eat this last meal together. And Elijah says, go ahead and prepare the meal. And miraculously, the meal doesn't run out. There's enough oil, enough flour for them to su sustain life. And then, if things weren't bad enough for the widow, her son dies. Elijah, through God's power, raises him back to life. And then in chapter 18, we have this contest between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal. And they set up altars. And during this famine... They take water and pour on the, uh, the altars. And they ask for the God of Baal to light the altar. And it doesn't happen. But when Elijah calls on Yahweh, it burns his sacrifice. Fire comes down from heaven. He sees the miraculous. He sees God's hand at work. He has seen God up close and personal. And yet, what did we just read today? had enough how many of you have had enough well how many of you seen God up close and personal how many of you seen God's hand at work we have a word we use quite frequently it's called blessings that's God at work God blessing our lives touching our lives if nothing else we see God at work through the blessings he sends our way on a daily basis so how should we act once we've had enough, when we've had our fill, when you're fed up with your current situation? Let's look at uh, Elijah's example. What did he do when he had had enough? When King, Queen Jezebel says, I am going to kill you, what does he do? Verse 3 says he was afraid and he ran for his life. He's seen all these miracles, seen all this work of God. And what happens? He takes off and he runs. He runs as far as he could possibly go. He runs to Beersheba, which is the furthest he could go and still be in Israel. And then once he gets there, he tells his servant, you stay here. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. He isolates himself from his companion, his servant. And he basically says, my ministry is done. I'm finished. I've had enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. I don't know that this is the example we need to follow. Elijah is, this part of his life is something he shows his humanity, but it's not the example for us to follow. 
got, notice how once um, Elijah leaves and runs, what does God do? Verse, verse um, 9, he says, what are you doing here? He didn't give him a sermon. He didn't give him a reprimand. He didn't belittle him. What did God do? He says, what are you doing here? Aren't you glad we serve a God who's so gracious, slow in anger, abounding in mercy? Psalm 145 says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in the steadfast love. And he's demonstrating this to Elijah at this time, and he continues to demonstrate it to us as well. So what brings us to this place of despair? We all point to the different things that have happened in 2020 in our lives. When we say enough is enough. But what causes us to fall into spiritual depression? What causes us to fall into that pit? It can really be seen in uh, Elijah's words to God. When he responds to him, uh, verse, verses 4, verses 10, verses 14. He said, hey, I am very zealous for God. I'm the only one left. They're trying to kill me. They are not. They've broken their covenant with you. I am it, God. And what I want you to see here is what Elijah is doing. And sometimes we can find ourselves in this same place. And that's when we have such a high value, a high view of who we are. And we also tend to believe in some half-truths. For um, Elijah, he says, take my life. I'm no better than those that my ancestors. He was basically comparing himself to others. When he says, I am zealous and there's nobody left, he's comparing himself to others. There's this take my life and saying, I'm more important. There's a certain self-righteousness about him when he says, I'm the only one following God. There's a self-pity. He says, others are wanting to kill me when no one else but Queen Jezebel was the one that was trying to kill him. It was a half-truth. And he says, I'm the only one that cares. How often do we fit the mold of Elijah when we focus on self and we place ourselves on a pedestal and we put everyone else down? God asked him, says, why are you here? Why are you here, Elijah? And this is what I want to leave you with today. This is what I want you to hold on to. I know we've been through this virus. We're going through it still. We're still dealing with it. And there have been many words and phrases that have been introduced to us. Many words and phrases that have been used repetitiously. Ideas such as six feet apart. Social distancing. Have you ever heard of that one before the 2020? A quarantine. That's something that we constantly are referred back to. But one that I think I hear over and over and I'm still trying to define is essential. What is essential? What is an essential business? We all have our opinion on what is essential, but this is a series of sermons on what is essential for us as children of God. What do we need? What do we need? And as we look to Elijah's example and what he experienced, we need to put our eyes on God. And there's three words I want to leave you with. Eat, listen, look. First of all, Elijah, he runs in the opposite direction. He runs from where God wants him to be. And he lays under a tree and says, I want to die. And he's wakened by an angel. And the angel says, take, eat, eat. You're going to need nourishment. Many times when we find ourselves in the pit of spiritual depression, we need to take care of self. Literally, we need to take care of our physical well-being, but we also need to take care of our spiritual self and feed on the Word of God. Not just on Sundays, but throughout the week as well. It's then that we're able to, to deal with the situations that we're facing. Jesus said to his followers in Matthew's gospel, he says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, come to me when you're tired, when you've had enough. Come to me and I will give you rest. First, we need to eat. Then we need to listen. As Elijah travels 40 days, 40 nights, he finds himself on Mount Sinai where years before Moses received the Ten Commandments. And there he sees a couple of miraculous events of nature, a great wind, a great earthquake, a great fire. And in each one of those, there's a, there's a reminder of the past, the dramatic past. But God's not in these. He's not in these. But he does speak to him, not overbearing, but in a gentle, still, small voice. He speaks. We need to listen. How often are we wanting to say what we think rather than listen to what God has for us? We need to get alone and listen for that gentle voice of God. We need to eat. We need to listen. And we need to look. Look. God speaks in this vo voice to, to Elijah, and he says, there's two men I want you to go anoint. They're going to become the king of Syria, the king of Israel. He said, now I want you to go anoint this one man. He's going to be your successor, Elisha. And basically what God was saying in his still small voice, he was saying, I still got work for you to be done. I haven't finished with you yet. Eat, listen, and look. Look to the future and the plans that God has for us. Grace works. God's not finished with us yet. He's not finished with us here in this community and around the world. God is not finished with our country. It may be in a mess, but God is not finished. And until he is finished, his children have work to be done. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do thank you that as your children, you don't give up on us, Father. You're merciful, you're gracious, and you continue to extend your love to us. Father, we're, we're in a bad place right now where we just want to say we've had enough. Take our lives. But God, may we be mindful of the fact you still got work for us. May you continue to inspire, motivate us to make a difference in our neighborhood, our community, our city, our state, our nation. Oh, Father, may we be a people listening and looking to you. Father, I pray now that you would just draw us to yourself, make yourself known to us, whether it be through the dramatic or whether it be through your still small voice. Thank you, Father, for your presence and thank you for your love. We love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you want to respond for any way, if anybody is looking to join or anything, we're going to sing a song here. It's a song where we invite you to respond, invite you to talk to any of the pastors if you want, or just sing along with us. Just as I am with her
Thank you, Pat. And thank you, worshipers. Thank you, Grace Works Church family. May God bless you. May you have a great day, great week. May you go and carry the words from Elijah and the words that God placed in Elijah's life. This morning, we have Charles and Sandra Beard coming. And uh, this couple that I met about halfway, I told them there's no need in working up a sweat. Just stay right where you are. But Charles and Sandra come as brother and sister in Christ. And they've been very faithful to the local church. Brother Beard has been pastoring. And they come and they want this to be their church home. So, uh, Grace Works family, let's uh, show them our love and our appreciation. We welcome you. God bless you both. Charles and Sandra, make sure you try to get over and introduce yourself. Take off your sunglasses or mask or whatever you're wearing so they can recognize your face and and uh, I appreciate so much their testimony because they said that uh, we, we want to get here and we want to get busy. We want to do something. And that just encouraged me so much. And I thank you for your witness to me and your ministry to me. And I look forward to getting to know you better and uh, serving alongside of you. And uh, welcome to Grace World. Now, Michael. Ready to close it up? I'll do it. Hey, don't forget, we have one. You know, this is an incredibly unique opportunity. We're going to be talking about this for years and years and years. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen years down the road. We're going to talk about the time that we couldn't meet in the sanctuary and we were able to meet out here. You have one more planned opportunity to do that. So next week, we're going to be out here. It's supposed to be 10 degrees cooler next week. Actually, it's supposed to be a nice day. The forecast holds up. So be sure to be a part of it next week. So come on out. And once again, these offering boxes are right here. If you brought your offering this morning, if you filled out uh, one of these survey slips, uh, drop that up here. But uh, thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Go ahead and stand up while you are dismissing. I'm going to sing a song for you. And you all can sing it with me if you know it. It goes like this. When the trumpet of the...